What's going on guys? Top Shot Real Clean in here again. Um, just finishing up this Abu Garcia 5600C4. Uh, last video we went ahead, took off the left plate, spool, all that. Our auto leveler came off as well. Showed you how to go ahead, clean that up a little bit, um, get all the debris off of it, lubricate it and put it back. This video, we're going to do the right hand plate. So this one's going to be a little more tricky, a little more intricate inside of here. So definitely pay attention if you're going to attempt this. First thing we're going to do is we have these three thumb screws all the way around. Go ahead, loosen those up, take them off of there. Guys, if this is your reel, these are thumb screws. They do have a flathead uh, slot in the top of them. But they're thumb screws. Don't get a screwdriver on there and torque these down because these are made to, if you need to adjust your brakes when you're out fishing, something like that, you can pull the side plate off. Bam, there's your brakes right there, ready to go. So try not to over tighten these to where you just, it's impossible to get them off when you're out there in the field. So after that, we're going to go ahead and start disassembling our side plate. So we have a Phillips head screw right here. We're going to go ahead and take out. Take that screw off of there. This whole plate will come off. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Set that aside. After that, we're going to take this nut off of here. Um, this is a 10 millimeter nut. Use the right equipment, guys. Use a ratchet. Don't get on there with channel locks and pliers. You're going to see it. You're going to scar it up. You're going to see the teeth marks in it. Do it right. 10 mil goes on there. Go ahead, loosen it up. It's not tight or they shouldn't be overly tight. The one you have might be, but just make sure not to over tighten it. That guy comes off of there. Underneath here, you have a little E-clip. Best words of advice that I can give to you is if you're gonna be taking these reels apart a lot and often, um, go out, buy a box of these, because these things are a bear, man. You try and take them off of there, unless you have them in close to you and you have your hands around them, that Eclipse is going to shoot off and it's going to fly across the room somewhere. Um, so best advice that I can give you right there is just buy more of them because you're going to lose some of them. That guy pops right off the side. Set it aside over here. Handle comes off. Um, you're going to find some a bunch of junk under here. You're going to find sand. You're going to find debris. You're going to find all kinds of stuff under here. Wipe this off. Make sure you get it clean. After that, you have this little retainer clip on here. Come on now. Pull it off. Then you have your star drag. Star drag, just unscrew it. Take it all the way off. Bam, pops off. Set it aside in line. After that, you're going to have two washers in here. Um, so these washers are actually cupped. They're bent, kind of like that and they're in there stacked on top of each other like that. So what you wanna do is whenever you take these off of here, pay attention to what position they're in because they do need to go back in the same position. They work like leaf springs. So if they're bent like this, you don't wanna put them back together like that. Then you just have one big spring. You want them in there like this. So that way you have a little bit of flex here and a little bit of flex here. Whenever you tighten that drag down, that's what's gonna tighten the actual drag washers. So pay attention to how these come out of here. Me, I know how they go back in. I'll show you how they go back in as well. But let's take a look at them. You can see that they are bent a little bit. So whenever you put them back together, you see that gap in there? That's what allows you um, that spring pressure. After that, set this guy down. Go ahead, take this cap off. It's just a spool tensioner. Um, there's nothing underneath it. Just make sure that you don't have anything else under there. Sand, grit, grime, debris. Um, just make sure you clean that out as well. After that, you got two Phillips head screws here. Go ahead, pull those out. go and after that got to put your finger on top of your shaft here push down as you pull up on that cap it'll help it come off of there 
and your cap comes straight off. Sometimes this guy will stay in there. Just kind of push it out on one side or the other. It's that collar. So push it out of there. Clean it off with a paper towel rag inside and outside. Make sure it's clean. Uh, I gotta get one of my hands are all oily right now. So after that, you're going to see your main gear and your shaft gear here. Some people call them pinion gears. I call them shaft gears. Tomato, tomato. Is it, is, it is what it is. Call it what you want. So you're going to see those. Inside of here is a one-way bearing. It's called a needle bearing. Uh, what that does is every time you reel, it allows you to reel one direction, but it won't allow you to reel the other direction. It won't let you reel backwards. That's the bearing doing it. Check that bearing out. Make sure there's no sand in there. Make sure there's no debris in there. Just keep an eye on it. If it's rusted, definitely get in there and clean it out. Take a um, Q-tip, some lubricant, get in there, clean that out, clean all of that rust out of there. Because if not, you know, this is the reel that you're going to end up catching that big fish on. You're going to be fighting it. Every time you let go of that handle, it's going to start spinning backwards. It's going to backlash your spool. It's going to break the line. Make sure that that bearing right there, that needle bearing or roller bearing, is clean. After that, go ahead, just check this, spin everything around, make sure there's no debris on it. Obviously, when I clean reels, I'm going to disassemble all of this, but that's not the point that I'm trying to show y'all right now. I'm just trying to show y'all general maintenance. Um, if you want, you can pull this off there. It pulls off in one piece. Just check underneath it. See if there's any kind of debris underneath there. Again, sand, anything like that. Um, be careful. There is another little wear washer underneath here. It sticks to it a lot. So make sure that that's still on there. Go ahead. We'll put this guy back on there. Like that. Make sure that your drag washers are seated correctly. Like that. Again, just make sure that there's no debris in there um, if you need oil go ahead drop some oil on here um, the thing is with these gears it's you have to use a very specific oil some people use grease some people use thin set oil me myself I like to use a it's a it's kind of a custom oil that I have designed it's a very tacky stringy oil um, so whenever you spin this gear it's actually extremely sticky so you'll get kind of spider webs that come off of it Oh, I can't, it won't do it now because that pinion gear keeps moving on me. Um, but it's extremely stringy stuff. Um, so we want to that that allows it to stay on the gears inside of there. It doesn't fall off, doesn't run off. It's very sticky, so it stays. Um, so just make sure you got some lubrication on there. If you open it up and it's got blue pin grease on there, chances are it's going to be overdone. They're going to have way too much grease in there. Just take some from the top of it. Scrape it off, put it back on the teeth of the gear. Uh, one thing I can tell you about lubricants, don't use pin grease. That stuff's awful. It gets everywhere. It cakes up inside of there. And it just makes a big mess. So now, don't get me wrong. Pin grease has its usage. It has its place. I use pin grease in almost all of my uh, spinning reels. So I use them. I use it in there in almost all of them. That's its place. It's a thick grease. It's tacky. It moves around. It's able to lubricate those spinning reels like that. Now, a bait caster or a conventional, it slows them down. So, whenever you're casting with these guys, this spool needs to spin freely. It needs to spin fast. When it's caked down by pin grease, stuff like that, it won't do that. So, don't get me wrong. I love pin grease, but just not in a bait caster. So, after that... Make sure that everything's kosher in here. Everything looks good. You don't have any corrosion going on. If you have corrosion going on, get you a stiff, um, a stiff copper brush or a stiff brass brush. Go in here and clean that corrosion off. Don't get all crazy on it. This is just nylon here. Um, don't get crazy on it. You'll scar it. You'll scratch it. But just get in there and get that corrosion off. After that, we're fully disassembled. Put your little oil back in here. Make sure that's oiled. Oil spots are going to be this shaft right here. Make sure you oil that shaft. That's going to help you out. It's going to smooth out that reel. Whenever you have this off, you can see this pin, pinion gear right here rides in this little clip. Go ahead, throw your drop of oil on that as well if it's dry. Only if it's dry. If it's still got lubricant in there, guys, don't worry about lubricating it. 
Um, you're just going to make a sloppy mess. You put it back together. It's going to be leaking out. It's going to be, you know, dripping out of there. It's going to make you real slimy and oily. So if it doesn't need it, again, don't use it. After that, we'll go ahead and throw this guy back together. Pretty simple going back together. Side plate goes back on. Just like that. Let it sit down on there. Make sure you got it set correctly. Okay. Two Phillips head screws go back in. Again, just like the other side plate, do not tighten this one down until you get the other one in there. You don't want to tighten this and it lift this side up. Then you come back and try and over torque it with this screw, trying to straighten everything back out. You're going to bend it. It's going to put tension on the reel. It's not going to be pretty. Now, once you have both of them in there, go ahead and tighten them up evenly. Go ahead and snug them both down. After that, go ahead and tighten them. Now, these screws are very small. They have a very small head on them, so don't over tighten these guys. I have so many reels that come through that these screws are almost stripped out from people just locking them down. You don't have to do that. These screws aren't going anywhere. This reel's not vibrating that much. These screws aren't going to work themselves out of there magically. So don't over tighten these guys. Make sure you just snug them down a little past tight. After that, going to go ahead, put your barrel, your barrel bushing back in there. This is what actually runs on that roller bearing, that needle bearing inside of there, that anti-reverse bearing. So that goes in first. Now you're going to put your washers back in. So you can see this one is curved, it's bent, it's bent this way. You want that low point right here on that barrel. So we want to put this one in there to where the bend is going this way. That's what's going to push on that barrel right there, just like that. Now we want the next one going on there like this. We want to put it on to where the bend is this way. Go ahead, get that guy back on there. And you can see when you slide them together, they don't meet up. You have that little gap right there. You want that. That's your spring tension. That's what's going to give you that springy factor, is both of them being opposite directions like that. So after we get done putting those on, star drag goes on. Some of these can be a pain. If the threads are cut like this one is, and the threads are cut like this one is in here, it automatically starts. So you have a very large chance of cross-threading these. Do not cross-thread these. It is brass. You'll barely feel it, but it'll start cross-threading. So go ahead, pick it up, turn it on its side to where you can see if it's angled one way or the other, and get these guys on there. Because, oh wow, check that out. I actually got it. Almost every time I do this, they cross-thread, and I got to do that four or five times just to get it to drop on there correctly. So grab the center right here where those cuts are and just go ahead and run it all the way down on there as tight as you can get it. Now it's not going to be super tight. Um, after that, we're going to put our cap back on. So drop that guy in there and screw it down on. Don't tighten this all the way down. This is your spool tension. If you tighten this all the way down, you're never going to get the side plate on there correctly. So just put it on there. Just snug. So we have that on there. Next up is going to be our retainer clip. Drop that on there. Our handle goes on just like that. Now this dreaded E-clip. Again, putting this back on, this is where they fly across the room on you again. Don't use a screwdriver. You're gonna, it's going to slip off. You're going to have big scars going right off your handles like that. I use my fingers. Um, you can use needle nose pliers. Uh, whatever you can get in there with to push this guy on there. I like using my fingers, but that's just kind of personal preference for me. Oh, come on. There we go. So it's on there. It's ready to go. Um, again, just be careful <laughs> with those guys. Now your nut goes on there. Again, be careful. This is brass. It'll try and cross thread on you every time. Put it on there, 10 millimeter socket. Don't tighten it down, just snug it. Just get it to where it's snug like that. Because this guy right here, all these teeth that are cut out in it, it needs to line up with that hole. So what you're gonna do is drop it on there just like that. Now take your ratchet and turn it 
until it lines up with that hole. That's it. That's as tight as you need this thing. You don't need to go in here and get it super tight and torque it down, guys. Don't do that. You're going to strip it out. It's brass. And after that, Phillips head screw goes back in. Just like that. Go ahead and tighten down your drag a little bit. Now that you have a handle to do it with. Give it a spin. Make sure everything sounds good. Real smooth. Just like that. Throw your side plate back on your reel. Tighten your thumb screws down. Again, don't use a screwdriver. Don't over tighten these guys. You don't need to. There's no point in over tightening these. You're just going to make your life harder when you go to try and reset your brakes out there. So, just lock it down. At that point, push your button, check your spool. Go ahead, give it a spin. You can see that's probably perfect for casting, but just go ahead and adjust it with your spool tensioner over here. Get it where it was, get it where you like it, um, things like that. So, that's it for the Abu Garcia 5600 C4. Um, that's really all you got to do uh, for general maintenance. And that was a very in-depth general maintenance video. This is very, if you really drop this guy in salt water or if you dropped it in sandy water, uh, something like that, that's when you're going to have to break this thing fully down again like that. And just for routine maintenance or just, you know, bring it to your, um, whoever cleans your reels and they'll go ahead and do it for you. But if you're just fishing fresh water, um, if you do fish salt water and you rinse this off, you didn't drop it in the sand, something like that, then of course, just go ahead, rinse it off like you always do. Pop this cap off there, oil both of those bearings, um, pop the side plate off and just, you know, put some lubrication inside of there, put it all back together. You should be good to go. You don't need to fully break this guy down like that. So other than that, guys, if y'all have uh, any real requests, if y'all want me to do a certain reel or if y'all want to see, you know, a different kind of video, something where, you know, I break the bearings down or, uh, you know, me actually taking apart a dirty reel and see how I clean it. I definitely leave that in the comments, guys. So I'll be able to help y'all out. Y'all are kind of running this show. I'm just, I need to know what y'all want to see. So other than that, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. Definitely comment below. Y'all have a good one, guys.